Gold Hoarder Vaults are probably one of my favourite voyage types in Sea of Thieves. I love the puzzles and I love the Indiana Jones feel to these ancient vaults. These voyages send you on a quest to find several pieces of a map followed by a key for an ancient vault. When you've uncovered the key you are able to open the vault on a specified island and inside you'll find lots of treasure along with a puzzle to solve in order to gain access to the ancient tribute chest, the most valuable item inside. I get asked a lot how I can do these puzzles so quickly, so in today's video I'm going to offer a few tips for these voyages in general as well as explain how I do these vault puzzles by just using one medallion instead of three, so stay tuned for that. Hello pirates, my name is Ellie and I post regular Sea of Thieves guides and news on this channel. If you want to stay up to date with the game, then remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I put up a new video. Okay, so first things first, you obviously need to get yourself the voyage from the gold hoarder, you're looking for the one that says a deadly vault locked by whoever. Once you grab this, then you just need to raise your gold holder emissary. You don't have to, obviously, but it's a good idea for that extra loot bonus. And then head back to your ship and vote down the voyage. You'll be given a compass which shows you where to head to find each fragment of the map. And this map will then show you the location of the key and the inscription on the key will tell you which island the vault key is for. Reaching grade five emissary on these voyages is actually harder than you would think. You'll definitely have to do some extra bits and pieces in order to guarantee that grade five bonus. So how do you do that? Every time you dig up a map fragment, there's a chance that a special type of skeleton will spawn, usually in a group of about five. These skeletons drop gold hoarder trinkets and these are going to help you raise your emissary rank. I've found you get about three for each set of skeletons that spawn, if they do spawn. Sometimes you can get quite unlucky with these spawns and I've had several voyages where I've only gotten the skeletons to spawn on one fragment dig. As with most emissary ranking, it's a good idea to kill skeleton captains, skeleton sloops and galleons, and megs. These will not only rank up your emissary, but you'll also get the extra gold hoarder loot and picking up and putting any gold hoarder loot on your ship will increase your emissary rank. You also want to pick up storage crates because these give you a decent chunk on emissary rank when discovered. You want to get as close to rank 5 as possible before doing the vault, ideally at least rank 4. One other thing to note with these is that you can quite often get the X marks the spot on your quest map before you've dug up all the fragments. If you're in a rush and you don't care about emissary rank then this is fine, you can just go straight to your key dig. However, if you want to get the most bonus for your loot or if you're grinding for the emissary ledger then it's a good idea to do all the fragment digs even if you already already know where the key is. This is because digging up the fragment and killing potential skeleton spawns and the trinkets that they drop all count towards your emissary rank. You may also run into skeleton captains on islands and other treasure that you can pick up to increase your rank. Either way, once you've got the X marks the spot, whether you continue to the other fragments or not, you can now go and get the vault key. In my experience, a vault key dig will always spawn some of the special skeletons and you'll also find that the vault key will be inside a collector's chest. This is good because it's usually empty except for the key so you can put some of the trinkets inside to get it back to your ship, head back to your ship with the key and you're ready to head to your vault. There are only a few select large islands that have vaults. All the insides of the vaults are the same, but the key you get will tell you which island to go to. Each of the select islands has a special area where the vault entrance can be found. For us, when we recorded this footage, it was Devil's Ridge. The vault entrance here is on the far southeast side and you can park right next to it. Ideally, you want to park your boat as close as possible to the vault entrance with an angle so you're able to harpoon the loot when you've got it out of the vault. However, some islands like Kraken's Fall, Crescent Isle, and Fetcher's Rest, for example, make this a bit difficult due to the position of the vault door. So you will need something like a rowboat to get as close to the vault door as possible. Once you've parked your ship or rowboat, take the vault key with you down to the vault entrance and open it only when your whole crew are ready to go in. The doors to these vaults are on a timer. Once the doors are open, the timer starts. You only have until the timer runs out to grab as much loot as possible and place it outside these doors. Once the door closes, you'll lose any loot inside the vault. You don't have to take it all the way outside to the outer door, just outside the inner doors of the vault is fine. You can relay the loot up to your ship or robo afterwards. Once inside, you'll find a large table in the middle. This table has the information you need for the puzzle part of the vault. There will also be a lot of loot around the edges on platforms and up top on platforms. You and your crew will need to use these platforms to get as high as possible because this is where the best loot usually is, things like captain's chests and trinkets. The easiest way for me to explain what to do is to explain what me and my sloop crew usually do when we do these vaults. Usually we assign myself to do the puzzles and the other player will go up to the top and drop down all the chests from the high platforms. So while I'm doing the puzzles, the chests are being dropped down on the floor ready to be placed outside the door. Once I've done the puzzle, I then start grabbing chests and taking them outside the door. I do this as fast as I can, and while I'm doing that, the other player is dropping down more and more chests and working their way down the platforms until they can help placing the chests outside the door. So now I'll explain the vault puzzles. The way these are supposed to work is there are four pillars in the back of the room with different symbols. Three of them have single symbols and the final pillar has a group of symbols. The puzzle solution is always three individual symbols 
symbols, followed by the final pillar showing those symbols in a group. You can rotate all these pillars to show different symbols, and inside the vault around the room you will find three vault medallions, which you place in slots at the front of the table to display the symbols you need. When you place these three medallions in the table, it will give you the three symbols which form this puzzle solution, and in order to open the secret vault door, you just have to turn the pillars to show the symbols you're given, and then turn the final pillar to show all three symbols together. Simple enough, right? Finding these three medallions can be really quite time consuming though, and if you're duo or even solo, then this time can be better spent moving loot outside. You can actually do these vaults with just one medallion, and I'm going to explain how. You will almost always find at least one medallion on the floor or low down on the platforms, and they shine a nice bright white so you can see them quite easily. Grabbing one medallion before doing the pillars is much, much quicker than having to find all three, and so as a smaller crew or solo, it's much quicker to do these puzzles with just one medallion. Now again, I'm going to explain how I do it to show the way it works. I'll run in and immediately remove the three chests which are on the tabletop. I put these outside. I will then look for a medallion. When I find it, I place it in the table and then look on top. It will show me the first symbol I need. I then run to the first pillar and turn it to that symbol. After this, I can go to the last pillar and find a group which includes that first symbol. When you find one, you can then move the second and third pillars to match the other symbols in that group. Let's take a look at this in action. In the vault for this recording, the medallion showed me that the first symbol was a chalice, so I go and turn the first pillar to the chalice. I then go to the last pillar and find a group with a chalice and tune downward chains and a key pointing down with a padlock. This gives me two extra symbols to use other than the chalice, so I then turn third pillar to find one of the other symbols in the group, which in this case are two downward chains and a key padlock pointing down. I find a key pointing down with a padlock so I leave it there, and then go to the second pillar to find two chains going down, but I can't find it. The third pillar must be wrong, so I instead find a key pointing down on the second pillar and head back to the third pillar to find two downward chains. I know it sounds a bit complicated, but I basically needed to complete the group of symbols on the fourth pillar by using the first three pillars. You can do this with every vault and when you get the hang of it, it makes completing vault puzzles so much easier. You only need to grab one medallion and then you can complete the puzzle by turning the pillars. I hope that all makes sense. It can sound more complicated than it really is, but I'm hoping the visuals of me doing the vault helped explain it. Let me know down in the comments. Once you've opened the secret door, you can grab the tribute chest and then head out of the vault with it. Grab all the other chests and trinkets you can and when you've done that, you can either head out of the vault or you can collect gold piles. Just bear in mind that if you decide to stick around and get the gold pile, you will drown and die and therefore you need to spend a little bit of time on the ferry of the down before heading back to your ship. This is fine if you're confident there was no one around but just make sure you aren't leaving your ship unattended for too long. Once you're back on your ship you can then relay the loot to your rowboat or harpoon spot and start to load up your ship. If you did manage to get your emissary rank up before you got here then loading your boat should get you to grade 5 and you can go and sell up. That's it, that's pretty much the way we do Gold Hoarder Vault puzzles fast. I hope the video helped you in some way, and if it did, then please do leave a like and subscribe for more Sea of Thieves content. I also stream on Twitch three nights a week on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 9 pm UK time. You can find me over at twitch.tv forward slash Ellie Boot. Drop me a follow over there to be notified when I go live. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the seas.